Alright, so we're back on this solemn main menu because I got a bad ending last time. But, uh, see if, uh, actually, I'm, I'm gonna try and get, like, 100% done in this game. Like, try and get all the bad endings, good endings, or whatever. I mean, why not? It seems like a pretty depressing story with all the, the creepy music tones it has in the background, I guess, is the way to put it. But, uh, yeah, alright, let's try and get a fucking good ending, or somewhat of a good ending, or an entertaining bad ending. I honestly forgot which save state I needed to go back to. I think it was this one. Love this song. Um, so yeah, last time I stopped her for doing it, and we fucking dumbass main character was too depressed to make a move. So I guess, just let her do it. I try to move, but I'm frozen in place. That's because I'm telling you to. What's the matter with me? Do I... Do I actually believe in how he's God? Doreen cuts off, and God picks up. Okay, this is kind of freaky right now. <laughs> what? There's a tear in the fabric space. It opens out of nowhere and begins to consume. The shadows peel away. The colors vanish. Sketches pitch and skew. The lines fade away. The whole world is starting to glitch. There's different music in the background, too. Through that nonsense already. just happened <laughs> why that was the intro sorry to be loud but what the fuck that's a one hell of an intro damn I guess I'll, I'll be talking over it so I don't fucking get copyright claimed for it, but, wow, this is definitely different from the usual high school cliche, where you just go around, join a club full of only girls, but, wow, honestly, I got, it's, it's a good start, I'm actually excited, unlike the other visual novels, I get bored eventually, because every other route's usually the same. Seems like a lot of drama, too. Wow. Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is she she knows. I always know she's in a video game because... So, I mean, it's on the phone. It's on the phone game of hers already. So, it's like she, she played through it all. and <laughs> She sees Shinichi and Miyuki in real life. And just thought, bruh... This is it. The world isn't real. But whatever. Um, wait, some weird videos playing on your phone. Hey, Aoi. Nuru. Shinichi. <laughs> was that the AMV? Is that what it was? You dropped your phone again. Uh. If you don't want to risk losing it, you need to make sure you hold on to it. Wait, why, why is this saying I've read this before? 
Just as I always smiles. Luda. Oh no, this is when I got the bad ending, okay. Whoa. Her body tumbles sideways. Should I skip all this? You know what, just so we can get through the visual novel faster, I'll just skip through the stuff I've read. Unless there's something different. But, I mean, you'll, you'll see if, it, if this gets cut out or not. Okay, so we're back. And as we were descending back downstairs, we actually received a photo. The one that Aoi couldn't send because she had no signal, but now she has signal. Oh hey, it's that group photo from before. Remember? The one with you, me, and Miyuki. Aoi claims she's emailed it to me forever ago, but for some reason I only just got it. It's been so long, I totally forgot. Oh, right. I guess her phone actually does work on occasion. Not often enough to actually be useful, though. Why is it so dark? Uh, right. I sighed to myself. Apparently her gamer brain isn't going anywhere fast. And then it's back to this stuff I've already read, what the heck? I didn't know <laughs> She's not paying attention. Okay, so this is new. So we're back. And this is the point where Mayuki finds out I told Aoi about the kissing thing. And she's mad. Usually this is where um, Aoi says the last, the last thing she said in the last episode. Where he likes her and her, she likes him back. But this time it's different, she doesn't say anything. Alright, let's keep going. She's not paying attention. Hakonano. Ah, this, what? That... Sure is a box, yep. Meow. Just then we hear a tiny meow from inside. Just like that, Miyuki's fury evaporates. That sure is a cat, yep. A teeny tiny little black kitten. Oh wait, there's a streak of white on its forehead. <laughs> she already gave it a name. Miyuki shrieks, her face buried in her hands as Aoi lifts the kitten in her direction. She sneezes hard and the force of it pulls her face back from her hands. Miyuki's wide eyed stare is transfixed on the kitten. She looks like she might tackle it at any moment. <laughs> Miyuki sniffs. Huh? But...
the hell do you think you're doing? Where'd you get those ears? I take my eyes off for two seconds and now she's wearing cat ears from her onesie. They're detachable, that's pretty cool. Oh, she's so cute. I might actually have to make this the thumbnail for the next one. Aoi frowns at her, down at herself for a moment. Aoi frowns down at herself in a moment. I remember this. The same exact thing happened in that game too. Neko Miyuki's tone is surprisingly icy. Anata, pet or cow, but you don't have to. Manga kiss and dog, but you don't have to. So, 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 こういうのは拾わないとバトルートに友達として忠告するわ。ここはゲームの世界じゃない。もしあなたが猫を拾ったりしたなら絶好よ。Just like that, Miyuki turns smartly on her heel and stalks away. Her long hair flutters in the moonlight as she disappears into the darkness of night. <coughs> the kitten meows after her, but she doesn't turn back. Moments later, she's gone. It was all so sudden, I had no, excuse me, I had no time to react. All I could do was watch her go. Meanwhile, the memory of our conversation floats through my head. I want to help her come to terms with her reality. And I think the best thing we can do for her... Aoi's gaze wanders into the distance as she takes off her cat ears. But this isn't her usual absent-minded gaze. Instead, she seems to be searching desperately for something she can't quite track down. You alright? Shinichi, 
Well, I imagine it means she'll stop being friends with you or maybe stop talking to you at all. No, she doesn't hate you. Knowing her, she just snapped and lashed out a little harder than she meant to. Aoi falls silent. But her emotional reaction is noticeably different compared to the time she attempted to blackmail us with that photo. I have to do something. Who could keep the kitten at my place? It's a big house and my parents aren't around. Turns out living alone has its perks. Yeah, fair point. Admittedly, I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving such a small kitten to fend for itself for hours at a time. Hi. Aoi quietly raises her hand. Aoi, Miyuki no tomodachi na no. Zekko, iya na no. Takara, kae nai no. Yep. The many life choices of life. I remember what Miyuki said on her way home the other day. She admitted that she saw her old self in Aoi. And if this were any regular classmate, she would never have threatened to cut ties. She wouldn't have risked making waves. She would have just smiled and played nice, no matter what. And yet, when it came to Aoi, Miyuki didn't play nice. You sure? Mm. As the kitten rum rubs against her leg, Aoi gently scoops it up and puts it back in the cardboard box. She pets the kitten sadly. She continues to pet the kitten over and over. Evidently, she can't quite bring herself to leave. Aoi, is she projecting herself onto the kitten? Maybe? Is that what's going on? With that, Aoi finally stands up and turns back, and sure enough... Aww. Her face is soaked with tears. Reflexively, I reach out and stroke her hair. Well... They can't all be happy tears, you know. Back in the classroom, Aoi never used to show any emotion whatsoever. But once we made friends with her, she learned to smile. And she learned to cry. Sometimes you cry when you're sad, too. But this isn't a bad thing. She's changing for the better. I'm sure of it. Then I start thinking, what if Aoi was alone? What if we weren't there for her? What if Miyuki hadn't been around to scold her? Obviously, Aoi would have adopted the kitten. She would have tried and failed to sneak the kitten into the manga cafe, then the manager would have thrown her out, and then... Then she would have spent the night on the streets. I can picture it all clear as day. Or I can see her being with the kitten in the rain. Aoi wouldn't have had anyone to turn to, and the kitten would have frozen to death out in the cold. God, are you out there? To Aoi, God has to exist. It's the only way she can feel validated in the way she chooses to live her life. After all, a just God would surely show favor to good people who do good things. If God really did have a cell phone, 
if he really was just one quick phone call away. Would he answer her prayers? Is he waiting out there somewhere beyond the sky? Wait, the sky? Oh crap, it's raining! The nights get pretty chilly in the fall. One measly cardboard box is, isn't enough to stay warm. That kin's gotta be freezing out there, helpless, confused, calling out for a mother that will never return. Even I'm not heartless enough to turn a blind eye to it. And the second Owie puts two and two together, I just know she's gonna run right over there. I find the cardboard box wilting in the rain. I open it and hesitantly peer inside. The kitten is gone. Hopefully it just means someone else came along and adopted the poor thing, but... Should I swing by the Nine Cafe just in case? Just then, my thoughts are interrupted by a migrant tone. Hello? What? You are? Of course, Miyuki must be looking for Aoi too. That's kind of reassuring, actually. She must have reached the same conclusion I did. Where's Aoi? I knew it. I'm at the cardboard box. The cat's gone. Hey, come on. Don't get mad at her for this. Nobody in the right mind would leave a kitten to die out here in the rain. Just stop shouting, okay? Take a breath. To be fair, I always hardly a child. She could probably look after herself and the kitten, assuming she... Uh, then I remember the sight of her standing absently outside in the school gate, no umbrella, waiting for Miyuki in the pouring rain. But where do we look? Uh, her parents' house, maybe? The implication is clear, and I can't deny it. Where else might now we go? The first place I can think of is the top of the school roof, up over the stairs. But there's no way Aoi would want to be outside right now, not with the kitten in tow. In which case, what does that leave us with? Where else would she go? It's no use. I can't think of anywhere else. I don't know where to even start. I don't have the first clue. God, I'm so fucking useless. Oh, right. Miyuki snaps me back to reality. Aoi, the self-professed transceiver. Aoi, the girl with just one entry in her address book. The two of us are only friends. And right now, we're the only ones who can help her. Miyuki. Thank you for helping me look for her. Somehow I can picture her exact expression. I know her, and I know she likes being friends with Aoi. She would never actually end the friendship. She only threatened to cut ties because of how she, much she cares. Otherwise, there's no way she'd be out here in the dark, in the pouring rain, trying to check up on her. I dig through my memories. All the days we spent hanging out with Aoi, I know our friendship is the real deal. There has to be a clue in here somewhere. There just has to be. The visual novel. For real, that was way too similar. Unfortunately though, I think that's where I'm going to stop it now because i got to do a bunch of edits because a bunch of stuff happened right now. But yeah, I'll probably upload another one because this one's going to be pretty short like 18 minutes but yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one